Hey, 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 Fit Mama, Jen Oliver here, your host of the Fit Mama podcast. This is the work in to your workout. Hey, Fit Mama, welcome to today's episode. This is all about making your dreams reality. And I am so passionate about talking about this, and you've heard me talk about it on this podcast already so many times, but I think that that is sort of the crux of what Fit Mama is all about. It is about strengthening your roots, as the hashtag for Fit Mama is, and the Love Fit Mama way, which all starts with love, starts within, it starts with connecting to that super important core of you, physically, right, with the pelvic floor and the deep core breathing exercises and the pearl pull-ups, all that that connects you to your core, which includes the foundations of Fit Mama, right, being mindful and aware of your sleep, of your hydration, those little things that we think are just whatever because we're busy in our lives, they are the important things. And It's often not until we injure ourselves or get sick or we get chronically sick or chronic pain or whatever the case is, something gnaws at us enough. And sometimes it's not physical. Sometimes it's emotional. Sometimes it's a thought that you keep thinking over and over and over and over and over and you don't realize where You are holding yourself back from making the dreams that you dreamed up in your head recently or not so recently when you were a little girl and your eyes just looked around with wonder. What's possible, right? What's possible? What if I married my Prince Charming? Remembering back to dating your husband or wife. Remember when you were dating? How did you feel? How excited you were? How filled with hope and imagination and joy? How filled with this were you? And were you able to bask in it and enjoy it? And were you making your dreams come true by having the wedding of your dreams or following through and having an engagement story that you were so excited to share? Did you share that with your man or woman before you got engaged or before you got married or are you married, right? Did you just skip that step and think, well, it's not important to me. And maybe it's not important to you, or maybe you told yourself at that time that it wasn't important to you. Maybe it was one of those times where you didn't say what you really wanted to say. And I know I did this for a really long time, and I still do this, and I find myself doing this. And I, I, towards my husband, and then I lament with my husband when I say yes to things that I really don't want to do. Or I say a certain thing. I'll just say something that was a part of an old program that I ran and I'll find myself and I'll catch myself saying things aloud. And that means I must have thought it before I said it. Well, maybe I didn't because my mom always used to say, Jennifer, why don't you think before you speak? Yeah. I heard that line a lot. So many times. Oh, I actually feel that like goosebumps in my body thinking my mom is in the room with me. Um, and it's funny with my voice. Here I am on the Fit Mama podcast. You only know me as my voice for the most part, probably, unless we know each other. But my voice sounds eerily like my sister, my little sister, and also like my older sister, who I have walked by a mirror in a store before and gone, oh my gosh, Amanda's here. And it was actually a reflection of myself, who I never thought looked like Amanda. And so it's funny how we, when we're not looking, we catch things, right? And sometimes you blurt out things and then you go, do I really think that way? Do I really feel that way? Do I really want to convey that to everybody that I talk to? And it's a lot of these limiting 
beliefs, I mean limiting thoughts, limiting conversations we have. And I'm so hyper aware of this now that in my real life, I'm very aware of when people are deflecting. And I'm going to talk a lot about deflecting, maybe in a future podcast, but I really am talking about this a lot with my clients lately because one of the things that we don't do well as women often and fit mamas is take compliments, right? We don't take compliments. If someone says, oh my God, you look so great, we go, oh, in this old thing or oh, your house is so beautiful. Oh, I still need to fix up this or I have to repaint this or this is broken. And it's like people don't notice that until you point it out, right? I mean, I am guilty as charged. I let my eyebrows go way too long for too many months. I let my hair be unbrushed for weeks and weeks. And it's funny how I get bothered by my own daughter during that. I'm like, you got to brush your hair. But of course, I don't do my own brushing of my hair because it's not a priority or whatever the case is. But where are these limiting things actually showing up in your life where you take them on as bad, right? When I don't brush my hair, I don't personally think I'm a bad person. I just think, oh, well, I could brush my hair. If I look at a picture, I go, oh, well, that would have been a good idea if I brushed my hair. But you know what? Is that important to you? And is that belief holding you back? Is it everywhere you look in your house that there's something you need to fix up or clean up or remake or remodel? And if you're looking in the mirror every time, instead of going, oh, wow, I look great today. Let's go. I'm ready for the day. We go, oh, my God, I need to do my eyebrows. Oh, my God, I need to put a full face of makeup on. Oh, my God, I need to highlight my lips. Oh, my gosh, on and on. How often we do this without even realizing we deflect compliments. Someone says, oh, your hair looks so great. And you'll say, oh, I need to get a haircut. Oh, I need to get a haircut. We always find something else, right? We always find a reason to not accept the love. And yet we look for the love. We go, I want this man to love me. I want this woman to love me. I want everybody to love me. I'm a people pleaser. I work hard. And we say these things to ourselves over and over And we are proud of ourselves, but we can't embody this. We can't stand in the light. I think we can. And I, you know, I had a really hard time with this growing up. I will honestly say that because I used to think anything was possible. My mom did help instill that in me. My parents taught me that I could do anything I set my mind to. And yes, there were times where they thought you can do this and I really couldn't or didn't want to. And then there were times where I thought I can do this and they thought, no, you can't. And we didn't match up all the time, which is fine. No one is supposed to always get along 100%. But I had the belief that anything was possible for me and that I didn't have to follow the norms, whether it was social norms or job norms or body norms or whatever norms and excuses, right? Generalizations. I thought, if I see something around me that I want, and then I think about it, and if I really want it, if it's worth the work that is going to be required to get that, because we all forget about the work. We all go, oh, I have this great idea. I have this dream, right? But then there is an element of work to get that. Even if it's, I want to go on a big trip and you have an unlimited budget, you still have to plan the trip. You have to book the tickets, right? There's some work involved. So it's important to think, what is my dream, right? I would love to write a book or I would love to start a podcast or I would love to take my family on this trip. And we have this dream and then we sort of stop there, right? We stop there because talking about the dream is really hyper exciting, right? We get that feeling, we get, oh, we get the hope, we get the joy of what could be. We go, oh, imagine, imagine I had this body of my dreams and I could wear whatever dress I wanted, go to these events, go do this, that, or the other, have all these pictures that looked great. Whatever your body goals are, why? Why does that matter to you? And if you can really embody what the dreams are, what the goals are, embody them and say, is this what I really want? And then if it's a true yes, this is how you'll know, okay? And this is really important because I've been asked this question so many times. This is the most important thing. 
it has to become more uncomfortable to stay in the same place where your dreams are not being realized, where you're not doing the things that it requires you to do to get the goal that you want. Because having a body goal or having an income goal or having a vacation goal, travel goal, book goal, professional, personal, whatever goal, it requires you that delicate discipline I talked about last week, right? That starting from compassion, but also knowing that A, you can do it, and B, it's more painful to be stuck and to stay at the place that you're at, right? To be doing that job that you know isn't what you're meant to be doing. To be that mom who's stressed all the time when you know that's not who you're meant to be. What changes, albeit scary, can you make? And this takes me back to a recent Instagram post that actually, I I think it was Instagram stories. I posted a picture of my old house, our old house, the first home that was not a condo that my husband and I owned when we got married. We actually had an incredible experience where our friends at the time were so generous that they couldn't attend our wedding. We had an out-of-town wedding, and because they couldn't attend, they offered to move us. And our closing date for our new home was after or was during our honeymoon. And so we had officially sold our condo. We were moving into our new home, and we were on our honeymoon at the same time. So because our friends were not able to attend our wedding, which was unfortunate, but very generous of them to even think about this, to offer to move us. So they got a few other guys and they moved all of our stuff that was already packed from our condo into our new home. So when we came back from our honeymoon, which we went to Cabo down in Mexico, it was really fun. I really love, we had such a good time. And we came home to our new home. And this was absolutely a dream home for us and we I fell in love with this home the first minute we walked in and you know when you just get that feeling when you walk in and you go yes this is the feeling right I want to feel this and I had that every time I drove up to our home oh I took these big deep breaths of gratitude just so grateful that this was our home and Oh, we just had so many great memories in that home. So we had a lot of great stuff in that home. Um, We had my second daughter at home. I had a home birth with her. She was born right in our bed, in our bedroom, and it was absolutely gloriously amazing and just wouldn't change it for the world. And we had such great memories. So when it came time to discuss traveling around the world, which I was sharing this story recently on a podcast the Ultimate Health Podcast, which is one of my favorite podcasts, who has oh, such incredible guests, so many guests of the people I talk about here on the Fit Mama Podcast. Gretchen Rubin, one of my faves of all time, she was on their podcast, and that's one of the first connections I made with the Ultimate Health Podcast. So it's very funny how things come full circle and I was very grateful to be on there and they were asking because they had come and seen me speak one day and I was talking about my trip around the world with my kids and my husband when they were two and four. This was about three years ago now. And uh, it was such good memories. But in order to do that, in order to make that dream a reality, we had to make some tough decisions along the way that so tough that I almost couldn't make them. Because of being sentimental, being nervous, being comfortable, you know, not knowing what it would be like to travel around the world with two young kids. I mean, there was a lot of unknowns because I didn't know a whole lot of people who were doing that. And I really, I don't know. I don't, I don't know really if I looked up other people um, and who were doing it. I never really... I remember my husband and I read a bunch of articles about people traveling around the world with their kids. And, you know, we just wanted to expose them to the world at large. And we wanted to go traveling while they were young. It was such a perfect time. And 
you know, but the hard decisions were selling our house. That was one of the big ones. And I remember walking into this condo, this beautiful loft that we bought uh, in order to travel around the world. So, you know, we actually upgraded in many ways when we did sell our home, but there was something about a home. And we were, oh, you know, we loved our home. We had a beautiful space. We were right on the trails. Our girls learned to walk, uh, you know, climb the stairs, walk on the trails. We went running. I used to be really integrated into the community. And it was really a hard move because we moved to sort of a different area altogether. So we just... You know, I've been back to that area now in three years, probably 10 times max. And uh, it's just not close. And it's just not, it wasn't something that I could keep and let go of at the same time. And when I walked into this condo, which is a brilliant, beautiful space, I just felt this pain of some sort, which of course was in my body just sort of constricting and feeling like, well, I don't have a backyard. I don't have a green space. You know, this is a really different lifestyle being indoors. And there were elements of that that scared me, but it's funny how living in it now. And, you know, we actually went traveling for nine, well, six months we were gone abroad and then nine months we were out of our home. Other than that, we were here. And the interesting thing about it was that we loved the condo lifestyle and we lived in a condo before we had kids. Now we have kids and we really do love being outdoors with them, but there's so many ways of being outdoors with them. You you know, not having a backyard, we wouldn't really let them out on their own anyway. So we would go out with them and go to the park or go on the trail. We can do that here. So we really didn't miss out on anything, but it was very sad to leave our home. And I remember the tears I cried over that. And you know, I wouldn't change it for the world because our world travels. And, you know, if you're on Instagram and you go over to the Oliver's Travel, we have a great Instagram where we share all of our travels. So that that is, you know, a fun place to check out our pictures of our kids and where we went all around the world. We had such a good trip. And the Oliver's Travel is kind of Chris and I's just side gig when we just post pictures when we get a chance. And it's just a fun way, especially for the kids. So, I mean, really thinking about what your dreams are, because I realized that there were dreams I had that were not mine, right? I thought, oh, wouldn't that be cool? Someone talked about it being cool or fun. And then I thought, yeah, that would be fun. And it sounded great. But upon thinking about it more, it didn't settle with me. It wasn't resonating with me. And I don't know how many people I talked to about traveling around the world who thought, well, that's crazy. I could never do that with my kids or I would never want to do that with my kids, which I can understand because my girls, our girls are, you know, they really get along well. They're only 22 months apart and they are like little twinning girls. And my older daughter. She's just such a good big sister. She's so inclusive. She so gives her little sister the time and the space to grow and learn. And it's just an adorable little thing. So it's all around cute. And that was hard. I mean, we were stuck in one room, like a hotel room for most of the time on our travels. And there were elements of it that were absolutely mind blowing, crazy inducing, but we remembered what we were doing it for. We were giving them an experience that, you know, going to school or daycare was not going to bring them. Staying home with us or going to the day-to-day things was not going to give them in the way that we had dreamed of. And with the timing of our work, I was working fully online, or at least I was about to. I pretty much launched myself because of that trip. I was still seeing clients, even though I had cut back hugely. I was not working one-on-one after I left for that trip around the world. So that was a really great launching pad for me and for my business because it gave me no other option than to go online, be the online coach and trainer and mentor and speaker and writer and podcaster and whatever other names I might want to come up with. That was what I had always dreamed for myself. And it was 2007 when I left a really good corporate job. At the time, I would think I was making 
maybe 65,000 with including my bonuses and stuff a year. And that was in 2007. So for me, that was really good. I was 25, turned 26. And then I left that job and I, I left again with a huge fear. I mean, a hundred thousand fears at that time. It was absolutely fear inducing, but I knew I had this dream of coaching online, of connecting with people around the world. BlackBerry was starting to come in at that point. My boss had a BlackBerry. I remember working at Good Life. I was a GM at a great club I love. And I sat there looking at her on her BlackBerry, answering her emails while she was not at her computer. She was not in her office. She was able to do this at home. She, she, had freedom to travel and answer things, calls, do conferences, all this from her little handheld. So I got this experience going, I love the gym and all, as much as I love the gym and teaching fitness classes, me teaching a fitness class for an hour helps a minimal amount of people in the way that I wanted to help them. Because I was A, you would have laughed at me, I was teaching body pump and I taught this for about a year, I would say, I was not coordinated. I could not remember the routines. I was getting disconnected from the music all the time. I mean, I was going, well, I loved to work out, but now that I'm standing up here on stage trying to get working out all you guys, I'm freaking out and I can't think and do this at the same time. So I was not a gifted in that way, let's just say. And, you know, it was not a long-term thing for me, no matter how much I wanted to be good at that and how much I desired to be part of that club and doing those things, it wasn't working for me. So I looked at the BlackBerry and I thought, I can coach people because what I really want is for those people who come into the gym on the first day that they're super excited and they sign up and then they leave and they go back into their life and I don't hear from them again or see them again and they get into life and life gets in the way and that's my jam. That's my jam. And as a GM, I was not able to do that. So unfortunately, I had to leave that. But I went and I studied my master's degree so that I could learn the psychology of health and exercise. And I learned so much studying willpower and self-regulation. And this is what I'm integrating into my next TEDx talk, which I am doing at the end of this month in Ottawa, which is really exciting. So I'm, I'm very, very grateful for the opportunity to do a talk and that all that I learned. And all I'm sharing this with you is for you to think, what was my dream? What is my dream? Because other people who I was friends with when I was doing my master's, their dream was to do a PhD. My dream was to not ever write again, if you will. (laughs) I mean, I was shocked that I wrote a book and I told myself I was not going to do any writing after I finished the book, only to realize I want to write another book and I've already been researching it. So that's another aside. But where are you not asking yourself the question of what do I really want, right? I could have done, done a PhD because everyone was doing it and obviously they were going to be smarter than me or cooler than me or get better jobs than me or whatever stories I told myself. But what was the reality for me to be going into five more years of school, researching, which admittedly I kind of like, but I like it in the Googling way, not in the reading. Well, I like articles, so I really do love research, but not in the synthesizing it and being according to the manual. Okay. Remember my undesire towards rules and regulations and the way things are and the status quo and how things have to be done. I have a real aversion to that. So that's why I'm here to perspect to you a different point of view, a different idea for yourself because your dreams are yours. They're not mine. Traveling around the world is many people's nightmare, not their dreams. And not having a stable home that has a backyard is many people's nightmare. And I see these people. And when I talk to them and they look at me like, how could you have ever done that? That's crazy. I understand because we're not all the same. And if we were, that'd be boring. So let us enjoy 
each other's differences and highlight them and allow ourselves to accept when others are loving us, right? Hey, your house looks beautiful. How about answering with, thank you, thank you, and smile, and onwards with a different conversation, or asking them, what are they doing at their house right now, or taking an interest in them in some way that is deeper than the superficial, right? Get on the same level as people, and that is where you start to actually connect with your goals and dreams versus theirs. Because when we put other people ahead of us on a pedestal or as if they're more knowledgeable, more smart, more competent than us, we really run into issues. And there's no reason why you should limit yourself to, oh, only those people can do this right? That's completely nuts. I mean, I come from a family that we are full of love. I will tell you that for sure. But my parents got divorced when I was 11 and they did not have a lot of love towards each other during those times. And I know that I took on elements of that. And now only looking back, you know, we see things in hindsight and we see where our traumas began, right? What triggered us to be the way we are, And when we can see those things and we turn on our 2020 vision called hindsight and we're curious, not mad or accusing, it's really curiosity to put the pieces together for your journey and looking at all the things that happen for you, not as things that can hold you back, but as things that have taught you to be the incredible person you are today to be the resilient you, to be the mom who can handle it all, to be the ambitious, gorgeous, healthy version of you on every day, on every moment of every day. Why not? Anything less is selling yourself short. I'm telling you, you can have anything you want. That's one of my chants with my kids. You Actually, it's my daughter came up with it, and it's you can do anything you want. You can do anything you want, sat num, sat num. She made it up. She, <laughs> so cute when we were doing chanting. Oh, you can. And when you can start telling yourself, I can, what is my dream? Because I can achieve it. Is going back to school for you a dream or a nightmare? Is it something that was pushed upon you that you should have this type of home, have that type of neighborhood, have this type of car, wear these type of clothes. But if you gave up all that identity with having and have a new identity with giving, what could you give away? What could you sell? What could you fill your life up with like experiences that truly make you rich? That's the abundant mindset that I talk about in that scarcity mindset episode. It's so interesting how we limit ourselves and it's it's a weirdly adaptive thing. It's like it's a safety thing, right? It's like, oh, don't get too big. Who does she think she is? Okay, let's dim her light, right? In Australia, they call it the tall poppy syndrome. And it's like, oh, what do you think? Who do you think you are, right? Oh, look at her. Oh, you're getting too big for your britches, right? Have we heard these things? It's like, why do we push each other down thinking that's a way to elevate ourselves or elevate the community in that fact, right? I mean, I love community-based things. I love people sharing their stories and I love people standing up for what they believe in. This, this is beautiful to me. What's beautiful to you and what can you spend your time, energy, and money on that really aligns with you, with the core of you? What makes you laugh? What makes you feel so relaxed and alive? What makes you feel connected to your spouse, your children, yourself? What allows you to get out of your head, crawl along that beautiful rainbow bridge I talked about into your core, right through the heart, through the joy, through the love, Because knowing that you want 
to achieve something in your life that is meaningful for you and your legacy and your children and their legacy, you have the power. You have the power if you let yourself accept the love. Because feeling and basking in that love that people want to give you. Your kids want to give it to you every day. Mommy, come here. Mommy, play with me. Mommy, hug me. Right? Go and do it. Play with them. Be there. Own that space that is so coveted between the two of you. Really connect and ask yourself, what would make this even better? How can it get better? How can it get better than this? Because it can. It can. And it doesn't have to be something that you fear. Because we're used to being told, well, if something good is going on, better look over your shoulder because something bad is coming. Or, oh, it's too good. Oh, this is too good, right? We have that upper limit. If you haven't watched or read, I was going to say watched, but I listened to it on audiobook. It was called The Big Leap. That is an amazing book that really talks about this upper, upper limit problem that we have upper limit problem, right? We set ourselves a ceiling that we don't even realize, right? My husband, I talked to him about this. He's such an incredible, incredible human, and he's just meant to do incredible things on this planet. He's a giver. He has a life of servitude. He just gives, and he works hard, and he just loves so deeply, and this is a gift, and it's one of those things that he can't really see on his own. He needs someone to reflect back at him, right? Because he's his biggest, worst enemy, right? He's hard on himself. He never praises himself. And if I'm not there to reflect on him, the light that he emits, how will he see it? Your kids, your loved ones, your world, connect with what's meaningful to you. Who are you spending time with? What are you tuning into, Fit Mama? Fill yourself up with what's possible and go after it. Don't bask in the fear of what could go wrong because that is what is holding anybody who wants to step into their greatness back. It held me back for years. I asked myself, who am I to do this? Who am I to speak about this? What if I get it wrong? What about when I'm called out? Why would I get called out? I'm sharing love right? What are you sharing? Stand in your integrity. Know who you are through loving yourself to the core. And if you haven't watched my TEDx talk, how to love yourself to the core, I have it in the show notes for this episode. So please tune in and share it because it is simple truths. It is data. It is the knowledge, the statistics, the everything wisdom that I have cultivated and created and collated from all that is out there right now. And I'm excited to do another TEDx talk on a similar topic, but different. And I can't wait to share this with you. So thank you. Thank you for being here today. Think about what really stirs you. What is your big dream? Share it with me. I want to know. Come into the Facebook group or share it on social media or in the comments. I want to hear from you, Fit Mama. Have a great day. Namaste. Namaste.